Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on anubhavtrainings.com. In this series of videos, we have learned how to develop and deploy a complete end-to-end -end application with full stack CAPM. We are using cloud application programming model from SAP, including Node.js and Mongo database. On front-end framework, we are using SAP UI5 to develop our end-to-end -end application, which will be deployed into the cloud. Today we have arrived to the last step of this entire series and our today's topic is deploying our application to Amazon AWS account. In this process, we will create a new AWS instance which is going to run for free for 365 days and then we will deploy our entire application and expose the port out to give access to the user. So let's look at the steps. In step number one, we are going to create a new Git repository for our existing project. We are going to push to the code to the Git repository. It will be a private repository. And if you are looking forward to see the complete source code, please send us an email on contact at onboardtrainings.com and we will be providing you the access of this private Git repository. Then you can additionally check the description of this video to see a link for complete end-to-end -end Git tutorial. However, you're already aware of Git, it shouldn't be a big problem for step one. In step number two, we are going to create a complete AWS account from scratch. We will provide and create a new free tier instance with Ubuntu Linux. In step number three, we are going to set up the Node.js and Git into our Linux Ubuntu machine running on AWS. Then we are going to install CDS development kit so that we can run CDS command line interface into the Ubuntu machine. And finally, we expose the port and test our application into the cloud. So let's get started. Our first step is to now push the code to the Git repository. So let me create a new Git repository over here. I will just create a new repository save it and as you can see here the steps the git repository has been created next step is to go to our vs code development environment and add the project to git so we will initialize using git init command we are going to perform the add operation to stage all the files and we perform a git commit Next step is to now push this to the Git repository. So let's copy the command from GitHub and feed these commands over here. You can see it's giving an error, not a valid repository because right now it's a private repository. And until I have an access to this private repository, I will not be allowed to push to this Git repository. So let me go ahead and give an access I will pause my video for a second. Much, much, much later. Okay, so I've given the access to my user ID for the private repository to allow as a collaborator. And next step is to do the git push again. And voila, you can see the git push works. And I have my entire code now available on the GitHub. Fantastic. Okay, so let's move to the step number two. We are now going to register a Amazon Web Service account from scratch. Some of the information is very sensitive, so I will pause my videos whenever it requires my credit card information, contact number, and OTP information. And the remaining steps I will show you in this video. So let's go ahead and create our free AWS account. So aws.amazon.com. We register and sign up for a free free account. Provide the details and sign up. And now it's asking the credit card information. So I will just pause my video here and provide the details. And I will see you in few seconds once my account is ready. A little longer than a few minutes later. So now my account is ready and we directly go to AWS console. 
every AWS console is a place where you can use all the AWS services. And now here we are going to go to EC2 service, which is basically an instance which you can create. And there are a variety of instances. Let's create a new instance. And we are going to choose a free tier Ubuntu instance. Ubuntu is a type of Debian Linux. So we are creating an Ubuntu instance. And in few seconds, the instance will be up and running. In the meanwhile, I can see that I am also generating a key here to connect to this instance. And this will be a Amazon PPK key. We cannot use putty tool to connect to using the PPK tool, uh, PPK key. So we need to convert this to a another type of key. For that, we are going to now use a tool called putty gen. Please install this tool from internet available for free and select our PPK key, which we have downloaded already from Amazon. We load the key. And now we save it back again as a private key to our computer. All right. So now we are good. In the meanwhile, our instance is also up and running. So let's connect to the AWS account using a tool called Putty. I have already installed the Putty tool. I will choose the putty tool and add a new configuration so first we will copy the ip address of aws machine from aws console and paste that ip address in putty so we don't want to be challenged with authentication every time hence we are going to now use our private key under the ssh auth section we browse the private key. And now we try to directly connect. Please note the name of this user here is going to be Ubuntu as we are using Ubuntu Linux. The default user is Ubuntu. And voila, I am now connected to my AWS account. Fantastic. As a next step, now we are going to go to setting up the Node.js and the Git into the AWS account. So you can see there are a few of these commands. I've already taken them from AWS documentation. I will also share the slide with you, which has all these commands. So let's install the NVM. NVM is Node Version Manager tool, which will allow you to install Node.js and a particular version as well. So currently I've observed that the CDS DK or the CDS engine works on Node.js 14. So we will install the Node.js 14 and also plug that as a default version. Okay, it's complete and next step is to install the git. So we would need the git tool to clone our project in AWS machine. So sudo apt install git all. It is going to take some time. I will resume the video once the installation is complete. Later that same evening. So 
So now my Git is installed. So let's clone the project. So we do a Git clone. And since it's a private repository, system is prompting me to provide my credentials. I will do that. And now the project is cloned. We can go to the project directory and trigger npm install command to install all the required modules. And now also run npm install dash g sap cds dk so that we can get the cds command line interface. Let's run the CDS watch command to start our project on NPM. Wow, it started now. So now in order to access, we go back to the instance console, copy the public IP, public address of our instance. Go back to the browser, paste it and put the port number as 4004. That's a standard port number for CDSDK. But you can see it's unable to access our application. The reason being Amazon has not allowed any traffic coming from this port number to its instance. So we have to add a security exception by whitelisting a incoming port request. So we have to go to the security group in AWS account and add a one more inbound rule for our port number 4004 of type TCP. And say any request from any IP address is allowed to 4004. Let's save the configuration. And now we can just go back and refresh our app again. Awesome. Wow. There you go. Your complete application is ready and available on AWS account. It's time that we go back and quickly go ahead and test our application. So let's create a new customer. Yes, let's provide the details. Company name. And Let's trigger the save. Bam! Amazing! Your end to end application is working fine. So, this is the complete end to end development of our application starting Mongo database instance on database as a service, building a complete Capom application on top of that, which perform all the curled key operations, including analytics flavor, and then building a Fury app. And today, finally deploying our app to AWS free account. This application is going to run 365 days for free. It's a free tier provided by AWS. So that's the end of this tutorial. If you want me to create more series like this, which is going to get you complete end to end development experience, please subscribe and like the channel. Kindly let us know your feedback in the comment box below and let me know if you want to see or miss something in this series. I will try to bridge up the gap on my next series. Once again, thank you so much for joining this series with us. Have a nice day and goodbye.